Okay, so what we spoke about, what we introduced in in the last video, I'm not sure if it was very successful, but we introduced Archimedes' principle. Okay, we we said, okay, well, what is this upward buoyant force? Um, uh, we know that the upward buoyant force is only dependent on the pressure difference, but how do we determine it? Well, let's assume that that object that we're trying to determine what that upward buoyant force is on, let's replace it with water. And then if we replace that object with water, that the volume of that object with water, then we know that that object is not, a, is not accelerating. And so that means that the upward buoyant force is equal to the force of gravity on that volume of that water. And so then we can determine what um, the upward buoyant force is. The upward buoyant force is simply equal to the amount of, of fluid. I keep using water, but it's fluid. could be water. It's equal to the amount of... Uh, it's equal to the gravitational force acting on the volume of the fluid that was displaced. Okay? Let's read this again. An object submerged either fully or partially in a fluid experiences an upward buoyant force equal in magnitude to the magnitude of the force of gravity exerted on the fluid displaced, that volume of fluid that is displaced. The volume of the displaced fluid is equal to the volume of the submerged portion of the object. Okay? So, compute the volume of the object that was submerged Compute that, vo that volume, right? Let's do a proper drawing. Compute whatever that volume was. Okay, that's meant to be some kind of box, okay? Compute the volume of whatever is submerged. And then that volume of liquid or, or, or fluid um, multiplied by, by, or the mass of that volume of the fluid that was displaced, multiplied by gravity is then equal to that gravitational force. Note that there is no reference to the shape or composition of the submerged object. The only factor that comes into play is the volume of the displaced fluid. So let's look at 18.6. If the buoyant force exerted on an object is always equal in magnitude to the force of gravity exerted on the fluid displaced by the object, why does a brick placed in a barrel of water sink? Okay, so you've got a brick, you've got an upward buoyant force, the upward, so you, you calculate the volume of the brick, volume of the brick, that volume, so you, you calculate the volume, then that volume of water, that same volume of water, right, you determine it's the mass, the mass of that water, multiplied by gravity, and that is equal to your upward buoyant force. Alright? So we've got an upward buoyant force, but now why does a brick sink? Well, because the, the, upward, buoy, the, the upward buoyant force is dependent on the volume of the water that it displaces, right? But the downward gravitational force is on the brick. Fg is earth on brick but the upward buoyant force is is based on the volume of the water that it displaces okay i don't know if i'm doing the best job at explaining this so the the force of gravity on the brick is larger than the upward buoyant force so it sinks okay cheers